Common Sense Energy Device Hidden Since the 70s. My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is news from the can. This common sense device from the 70s can be used to push the heat efficiency of a combined cycle power plant above 62% while also sequestering CO2. It does this by harnessing the natural isothermal expansion process seen in the rising bubbles of a two-phase fluid flow. I'm making these design suggestions openly available to speed up the adoption and use of this technology because clean, high-efficiency energy production is becoming a planet-wide matter of life and death. Chernobyl, Fukushima, and air pollution in China and India demonstrate the clear and present danger increasingly energy-hungry populations present to the health of the entire planet. This simple, scalable technology can be used to increase the efficiency of any number of industrial systems as well as generate power from other industrial processes, also from geothermal energy as well. It can also be used to release stored energy at peak load times. The best part is that the cost is on par with that of building a large water tower or windmill. Not to mention any building of sufficient height could generate its own power once fitted with pipes and a Francis turbine generator. Crucial points to consider are A. Francis turbine generators are very common around the globe. Micro Francis turbines come as small as 10 kilowatts. For what it is, it's very affordable. B. Any skilled pipe fitter can build this device, though it's always good to consult an engineer. C. This device is perfect for supplementary power generation needs in places like India and China. D. The device can harness steam and or compressed air from a combined cycle power plant to increase output and heat efficiency. E. The device can easily be used to sequester CO2 using available technologies. How and why it works. Ever try to breathe through a reed while completely submerged underwater like a ninja in one of those old Japanese samurai movies? As a kid, I found it virtually impossible. The weight of the water pushed the air right out of my lungs, and with all my might, I could not suck any back in. This is Archimedes' principle, the physical law of buoyancy at work. The greater density of water forces objects of lesser density like air bubbles rapidly to the surface. The presence of such a force necessarily indicates the possibility of exploitable potential energy. Many patents have been issued since the 1800s trying to do just that, use the massive potential of buoyancy to generate mechanical and or electric energy. But the technology has remained virtually unheard of. Robert A. Krauss and Edmund Joseph Krauss submitted a patent application on September 9, 1976 for something called a Hydraulic Prime Mover Device, U.S. Patent 4041710. They claim in their patent that there is no prior art and I have not found any other designs that come close to and predate the clean, simple framework they came up with. The idea is simply to join two vertical pipes together with a pass-through at the top and bottom, place a hydraulic turbine in the bottom pass-through, and let air bubble into one of the vertical pipes. The air bubbles create a two-phase fluid flow in the up pipe as the greater density of the water in the liquid-only down pipe pushes down through the hydraulic turbine to the other side. The energy potential is limited only by the maximum elevation the structure can achieve, the diameter of the pipe's friction, and the efficiency of the hydraulic turbine. This video of a crab being sucked into a crack in a pipe on the seafloor illustrates the unlimited potential of something called delta P, pressure differential. Imagine a pipe going from the surface of a deep lake near a dam or down into the ocean from the deck of an oil platform. The ambient pressure at the surface of the ocean is about one bar, or 14.5 psi. At a thousand meters deep, the pressure is about 100.45 bar, or 1456.9 psi. This means that if a continuous pulse of bubbles were to be strategically released into one of these large diameter tubes, a significant fraction of that 1456 psi could be harnessed with a hydraulic turbine. Two-phase fluid flow inside a vertical pipe is complicated by friction and laminar flow, so the bubbles should be released in stages from the top of the pipe to get the flow going. The two-phase mixture should be dynamically homogeneous to avoid oscillations from slug flow but the terminal velocity of the mixture should be higher than for water only and certainly higher than a bubble rising up by itself in a large body of water. 
power is the pressure differential across the hydraulic turbine times the volumetric flow. Considering that pressure is energy per unit volume, that one liter bar is equal to about 100 joules, and that the absolute maximum achievable pressure is probably about half the ambient pressure at the bottom, a delta P of 50 bar should yield about 5,000 joules per liter of water flowing through the pipe. For a 1,000 meter long and 0.5 meter diameter pipe, the volume is the length times pi r squared, or 1,000 meters times 0.7854 meters squared, equals 785.4 cubic meters, or 785,400 liters. So one cycle of air through the pipe yields roughly 5,000 joules per liter times 785,400 liters equals 3.927 megajoules of energy. This is obviously a crude calculation that does not consider friction and gas going into or out of solution as it moves up the pipe. Also, the actual energy output in kilowatts will depend on the velocity of the fluid. A rough estimate of such a rig could produce between 65 kilowatts and 100 kilowatts of power depending on the achievable flow rate. As we speak, a man from New Jersey named Mark R. Sigenfuss owns an active U.S. patent for damn near the entire concept in his water cycling system with compressor motive force and with turbine electric power generator. Patent number US75-84610. Most variations of the device are covered with an application date of June 8, 2007. So in the United States, the idea is pretty much tied up with Mr. Sigenfuss for another nine years until 2027. Not to mention Santiago Vitagliano, who owns a U.S. patent on the Seaborne single-tube version alluded to above, called the Dynamic Pressure Differential Hydroelectric Generator, U.S. 79690292, patent date June 1, 2009. Vitagliano's device is large scale and places the turbine at the top of the tube. The top placement is not ideal, but was probably designed that way to avoid infringing on Sigenfuss's patent which may all be moot because of the difficulty getting a patent outside the U.S. and policing of one-off implementation in far-flung locations. The thing is, for an idea to be patentable, two criteria must be met. The idea must be A, novel, and B, not obvious. Any idiot can easily extrapolate the myriad design possibilities from the 70s-era Krauss device once the concept of pressure differential in a two-phase fluid flow is understood. It is just not that complicated, which makes me wonder how Sigenfuss got a patent in the first place, considering that his device is a direct derivative of the Krauss device. The Krauss and Sigenfuss drawings side by side are almost identical. Now, according to Sigenfuss, he has reduced the concept to practice, which may have some bearing on patentability. Otherwise, any team of engineers can build a one-off derivative of this device to increase efficiency of any type of electric power generator where excess pressurized air and or steam are available. It's just that simple. This brings us to the most crucial point. Anyone can build their own version of this device because it employs readily available parts. A municipal power station can add this device to increase efficiency and boost output at peak load times. An apartment building in India or China could add this device to generate energy from excess steam. Any water tower or windmill can be converted to this technology. Hydropower can be generated from a dam without having to release water. Here are some suggestions for anyone who wants to build this device. Establish a vortex and two-phase fluid flow to avoid oscillations in slug flow. A Francis turbine may have an efficiency of 94% and is the most widely used hydraulic turbine in the world. No need to reinvent the wheel on this. A higher bypass gas turbine for primary power generation could shunt pressurized air to power multiple Krauss devices as needed for peak load times. Wind turbines can store pressurized air to be run through a Krauss device as a buffer when demand outpaces the wind. So obviously the many uses and configurations that can be assembled with off-the-shelf parts are unlimited. Why use a Krauss device instead of just running through an air turbine for power? Because the Krauss device employs an isothermal expansion instead of the isentropic expansion of a simple air turbine. Expansion is greater and thus more energy is released from an isothermal expansion than an isentropic one. Just a little food for thought. Hope you all got something out of it. That's about all I have today. My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this has been News from the Can. If you like this content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell. Yada, 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 yada. Thanks for watching. News from the Can.